My name is Henry Cisneros. I was born in the Prospect Hill neighborhood of San Antonio's west side in 1947. I think my uh, involvement in public life stemmed from family relationships. My grandfather, who came from Mexico, ended up building a large print shop and drew a lot of the political figures of that era to the print shop because in those days all the communication was by print. It was before television, for sure. Um, and the, so the family was always surrounded by some of the name figures of that day, and they were trying to do good work. The young Congressman Henry B. Gonzalez, for example, my uncle was his first campaign manager in his first run for public office. So that was always there. But you add to that that I grew up in the era of President Kennedy. I remember sitting and writing an essay as an eighth grader in 1959 uh, during the presidential election as to why John Kennedy would be a good president of the United States despite his youth and in that era Catholicism. Uh, which was viewed as an objection to why he might be able to become president. Um, so, uh, the Dr. King, the Civil Rights Movement, uh, I had heroes like John Lindsay, the mayor of New York, um, that got me interested in the urban and cities business. So, a lot of factors came together. And then I think the final sort of assurance that I would go into public uh, life was it, uh, that I graduated from Texas A&M in 1968, one of the most tumultuous years in modern American life. President Johnson was forced out of office by the Vietnam protests and the, the defeat or the, the, the battle at Way in Vietnam. Um, Dr. King was assassinated in April. Bobby Kennedy was assassinated in June. Uh, the cities were burning. There were Vietnam riots. Uh, the Democratic Convention in Chicago turned into a, a bloodbath. It, it, was, it was arguably uh, as close to we've been to civil war. Uh, and, and I just felt I wanted to do my part to put things on an even keel. And the rest of my life has been about cities and bringing people together and improving the economy and making the country work. Well, I was, uh, would rather have been a city manager. That's what I wanted to do with my life. But in those days, it really wasn't possible for a Latino to think about being a city manager. There just were no openings. There was no encouragement. So I instead uh, used my graduate studies to become a professor at UT San Antonio. My students are the ones who persuaded me that if I wanted to continue to make a difference in city government, I should run for the city council. So I ran and served for six years. And it was during that time that I really you know, confirmed for myself that I could be and wanted to be mayor. Uh, so I ran in 1981. I was 33 years old. And it was a, a rock'em sock'em election, but we were fortunate to be able to win with support from all over the city. I didn't expect that, but got support from all over the city. And then, I hate to be immodest, but uh, I ran for three re-elections and never lost a single district of the city. The one through 10 won 10, 10, 10 all, th all three subsequent times. So it was, it, it was affirmation that the city liked what we were doing. The, 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 the theme was bring people together to govern together, focus on jobs, incomes, enhancing the middle class, uh, building the economic base of the city. And those were themes that, that worked. Well, it was, it was a, there were a lot of successes during those eight years because we had created something called Target 90 that, that drew many of the leaders of the city into planning together for the future. So we were able to double deck the freeway system, uh, improve the river walk, uh, bring some major new hotels and, and uh, downtown uh, buildings, uh, built the, I got the permission from the, from the voters to build the Alamo Dome and built it in the subsequent years, um, finished the South Texas nuclear project and got it online. Uh, but the thing that I'm proudest of was the, uh, the bringing together of different ethnic groups. 
so that we began to reduce some of the vast divisions in governance and in just living together. Um, and I think San Antonio uh, has very wisely uh, elected a number of mayors who have focused on this consensus theme, which is let's improve people's income, let's improve people's access to opportunity, and we're going to have a better city. We're going to have a city that crosses ethnic lines and uh, where there's room for everybody that wants to work and make something of themselves. That is the message I was hammering, and I'm so proud that, you know, 35 years later, it's basically the consensus governing theme for modern San Antonio. The uh, first election was between myself and a fellow council member named John Steen. And it was almost impossible to have a greater distinction, you know, between us. I like John Steen a lot, and his son has proven to be a major uh, contributing citizen, as I knew he would. He's now the chairman of the water system, John Steen Jr. But he was, uh, John was 65 years old, I was 33 years old. He was a long-standing businessman uh, who checked all the civic buttons. I was. Uh, a university professor that was uh, on, too young to have done a lot of those things. Um, I wanted uh, an economic development strategy. Uh, he was basically representative of a, of a view. It said city government shouldn't be involved in those kinds of things. Uh, some people call me too progressive. Some people called him too conservative. So it was a pretty clear choice. He was obviously a traditional Texan. I was Hispanic American. and. As it worked out, the first Hispanic American to be elected mayor of San Antonio since Juan Seguin in 1836. So it was a pretty big choice for the city in that election. And uh, John would have made a good mayor, uh, but I'd like to think that we accomplished something on my watch too. <laughs> Well, I won by 62% the first wow, election. That's good. That's solid. Um, and the reason is, I really expected that I would carry strong margins in the uh, west side and south side uh, uh, Mexican-American community uh, because of the history of it. And the African-American community liked the civil rights tint that I tried to infuse in policy. I had no idea what I'd be able to do on the vote-heavy north side. I thought that if I could get 28 percent that I should be able to win with the margins I would get in other places. In fact, we got over 40 percent of the north side, which then took the total number up till around 62. So it was a, it was a, it was a big turnout election. In fact, I think it's true. Uh, and, and Nelson Wolf is the one who's told me that there's not the, the raw numbers of that election have not been eclipsed since the city was considerably smaller. So the turnouts that day were 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 were, were pretty huge because people saw uh, this vast set of choice before them, and it kind of had the sense of, of breaking historical ground. But I would say if there's one single trait that has served me best, it's to be a mediator. To listen to both sides very carefully and listen beyond the words to what people really are feeling and trying to say and then trying to uh, find a kind of consensus. Now I know that's out of fashion these days and uh, we're, we're into uh, celebration of the extremes. Uh, and compromise is thought of as a nasty word in politics today, but finding the middle ground so we can give people something of what they seek uh, and, 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 and make progress forward is what I do. That's what I do. Uh, that's what I do in business. That's what I do in, in family life. Uh, and it's what I tried to do. It's just my basic trait, sort of attribute, character. Uh, trying to respect people, listen to them, uh, value and, and, and really dig deeply to understand. Take the layers off of the onion and try to get to the core truth. What is it you're trying to say? How can we help you? How can we make you part of the process of going forward? And do so with a blind eye toward ethnicity or age or race or gender. Just people valued as people. I think the greatest accomplishment 
was uh, uh, rebranding San Antonio as a city ready to accept new industry, hungry for jobs, willing to work together, uh, aggressively investing in the future, the infrastructure that would be necessary to create jobs, and being what we call then a kind of public entrepreneur, bringing entrepreneurial values that people associate with business, particularly hard-hitting small businesses, and make those kind of the theme of government. That's what I think we tried to do, and I'm, I think we succeeded in doing. Well, I would say, um, with respect to public life, it is noble work. Uh, so don't denigrate the people who are in public service, because we need the mediators. We need the, the, the people who are going to invest our public dollars wisely. Um, and we need your involvement in public service. We need our best and brightest giving at least part of their time or part of their career to the public's business. From time immemorial, when human beings first came out of caves, there, there's had to be a leader of the group. Uh, human beings, groups can't function without somebody designated as a leader. So let's not knock the process of electing leaders or appointing leaders or following leaders. Um, and we need, we need leadership in this day and time. So I would argue to young people, train yourself for leadership. Don't be skeptical about leadership. Let's not be cynical about leadership. Let's recognize it for what it is. It's a human process. Um, beyond that, I would say study hard. We need your best technical excellence. And the rules of the game may change, but one rule that's not going to change is the mo we need the most competent people possible. That's sort of job one. So train yourself competently, technically, for what you do, and, uh, and, and give back to the, to the public interest. Well, I think the most influential figure for a whole generation of young uh, uh, political people in San Antonio, both Hispanic and uh, Anglo and, and African American, uh, was Henry B. Gonzalez. He was a paragon of honesty. He, he demonstrated the public interest. He was willing to personally sacrifice for the public interest. He never stopped working. He had a reputation for being a man of the people. So if you wrote him a letter with a problem, you would get an answer, and you would get a suggestion for a solution, and you would likely get a solution. Um, so he's the one who set the standard, and I think we're very fortunate to have had him as the civil rights movement came and we started to get uh, people elected from sectors where they had not been electable before. If they were following the Henry B. Gonzalez model, then we were going to be better off because there was going to be people who were, you know, rejecting uh, selfish ambitions, uh, corruption and graft and, and, and all those things that characterize a lot of other cities where the example was wrong, exactly the opposite.